you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to go? Hello, this is Mr. T with a tutorial uh, as part of our unit on exploring functions. And in this lesson, we'll be talking about looking at the end behavior of the functions. So when we're trying to understand how a function behaves, there's several things we might want to look at. We've learned how to evaluate the function at particular values of x, and we could make, say, a table of values, plugging, picking x values and plugging in. Sometimes we are interested in specific points where the graph crosses the x and y axis. So I've shown a typical graph down here. So x-intercepts are where it crosses the x-axis, and the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. We are many times interested in points where the function is at a maximum or minimum value. And there are two kinds of maximum minimums. There are relative or local maxes minimums. So this is referred to as a local minimum because it's not the minimum of the entire function. The lowest the function gets down here. So this is an absolute uh, minimum. And this is a relative or local minimum. This point is a local maximum. It's not a absolute maximum because the graph goes up seemingly here forever. Uh, so this particular function would not have any uh, absolute maximum. And in today's lesson, we're looking at what does the function do at the extremes, meaning as we get far to the right on the graph or far to the left, what is happening to the function? Is it heading off to positive infinity? Is it heading off to negative infinity or some other value? And that's what we're going to be exploring today. And we refer to that as end behavior. So the end behavior, as I just uh, specified, describes the direction the function is heading or the direction of the graph as at what are called extreme values for x, so meaning as x approaches negative infinity, so very large negative numbers, and as x approaches very large positive numbers, or positive infinity. Now when we are looking at these end behaviors and looking at approaching these x values, the y value or the f of x value could do one of four things. It might also be approaching infinity, either negative infinity or positive infinity. It might be approaching a finite number, meaning the, cur the graph would be leveling out. This is referred to as a horizontal asymptote. We've just recently had functions, the exponential functions, that had horizontal asymptotes, and earlier in the year when we did rational functions. Or it may be that f of x is undefined. Maybe the domain does not include all real numbers. So for example, recently on our study of logarithm functions, there are certain values of logarithms uh, where the function is undefined. So what we want to explore is how can we determine on each end of the graph which of these options. And we're going to have kind of two methods for common functions, meaning polynomials and exponential functions. We can memorize a set of rules. But for the majority of this lesson, we're going to be using a graphing utility. We'll be using the TI graphing calculator. But if you have other function graphing utilities like Desmos on uh, the internet, we can visualize this in behavior. Now just quickly on the rules, although in, we're going to be relying on the graphing calculator, for polynomial functions, it might be, for example, y equals 3x squared plus 2x plus 1, a quadratic, or it might have an x cubed. Remember this highest exponent was referred to as the degree of the polynomial, and this coefficient in front of that leading term could either be positive or negative. So when we have odd degrees, meaning the highest exponent is an odd number, so a linear function would be uh, exponent of 1, that's odd, or a cubic. 
the ends go in opposite directions. So when is a, when a is positive and this is odd, as x approaches negative infinity, y goes to negative infinity, and as x heads to positive infinity on the right side, y goes to positive infinity. If this leading coefficient is negative, those values are flipped. When the degree is even, the two ends of the graph both go in the same direction, either up to positive infinity or down to negative infinity, depending on our sign of our coefficient. Recently, we've explored the exponential growth and decay functions. They have a horizontal asymptote, meaning y is approaching a finite number. And in the ones we did in the last unit, this finite number was 0. And on the other side, it was going to either positive or negative infinity. For growth functions, where this b value is bigger than 1, the horizontal asymptote was on the left as x approaches negative infinity. And we went to either positive or negative infinity on the right side as x approaches positive infinity, depending on uh, whether our initial value, the a, was positive or negative, and the decay was uh, backwards of that. If you know these, it can help you possibly to more quickly analyze what's going on, on when you see the graphing calculator. For the graphing calculator, we'll review easiest with some examples, but you have to first enter the function. Let me bring over a calculator here by pressing the y equals button and entering your function into y1. And then we're going to graph it. And instead of pressing graph, we're going to press zoom six to give us a standard coordinate plane which goes from negative 10 to positive 10 and negative 10 to positive 10 on the x and y axis. And then hopefully, at, and the majority of the times, the graph that's visible when we do that standard graph, we will be able to interpret and write the end behavior. On some of the problems, we may have to adjust what's visible on the screen using the window button. And we may also look at a table of values using the table function. And we'll demonstrate those in some of the later examples. So let's look at some examples. So first, let's look at the format, the way we're going to write the answer. So this says, as x approaches negative infinity. Well, let's get this graphed. So I'm going to enter this function. So the function has been entered here in y1. And I'm going to press zoom 6. And we see the graph here. Now, as this is read as x, and this is read as approaches. So as x approaches negative infinity, that's on this side of the graph, we're being asked to write, what does f of x do? Remember, f of x is the y value. And here, the y value looks like it's heading down to uh, negative infinity. Now, possibly, it bends up. Now, we know from our polynomials, since this is an odd degree, that and the a is positive, that this heads down to negative infinity and positive infinity. We had that on this table right here. We're in this case here. But if we weren't sure, we could look at the table and scroll up to bigger and bigger negative values and just look at, does this ever start to go back up? And the numbers keep getting bigger and bigger negative. So as x approaches negative infinity, y is approaching negative infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, y is going upward to positive infinity. Let's look at our second example. So let's enter that function. So I've got this entered. Notice if you have a fractional coefficient, you'll put that in a parenthesis. So let's do zoom 6. Now, this time, given that this is an even polynomial degree, we know both ends should go, be going the same direction. So if this is going up, 
likely somewhere this bends up. So we need to see further over this direction and maybe further down. So let's get, we, to change that, we press window. X min tells us how far to the left, X max to the right. So we wanted to see further to the right. So let's maybe make this be 50. And let's look further down. So let's maybe make this negative 100. And let's press graph. So now we can see further over to the right. So now we see that it does come back up. And it's up over here. Uh, and we don't really care here. We know at some point it's bending back over. So here on both ends, we're heading to positive infinity. So again, these statements, those two statements are describing the end behaviors on the left side of the graph and on the right side of the graph. Let's look at a couple more examples. So let me uh, enter this uh, function. Let's clear this out. So we have x plus 15. And since I changed the window last time, I'm going to press zoom 6 to get back to a standard window. Now this looks like it's going up forever. Uh, if we weren't sure, if we were wondering, maybe it flattens out, we could check the table. We'll do that in a later one. This keeps going up. So on the right side, we're heading to positive infinity. But we need to see what's happening over here. So let's change the window and let's maybe go further left. So let's go to say negative 25. and it looks like it stops. Now that would make sense because we know the domain of this function is we can't take values, we can't take the square roots of negative numbers. So as soon as this x gets to be bigger than, ne than negative 15 or more negative than 15, we're going to get negative numbers. So in this case, on the left side, y is undefined. All right, let's look at another example. Let's look at an exponential growth example. Let's zoom six that. Now we know from our last uh, unit, now this is going down to infinity. So on the negative side, we're going down to negative infinity. And over here, it's going to horizontal asymptote at zero. But if we wanted to see that, we can press second graph to see table. And we can see, let me go back to, uh, well, I'm going the wrong way. Those numbers are getting really large. Now, you're going to see sometimes, this is scientific notation. So this number here means negative 1 times 10 to the 36 power, scientific notation. So negative 1 with 36, 0. So that's a really big negative number. And we're over here at negative x's. We want to look as x goes positive. So let's scroll down here. And we can see as we're heading to the right, we're getting closer and closer to 0. Now these are scientific notations, so that's negative 1 times 10 to the negative 17. So that's 0 0.000001, and there are 16 zeros. So that's a very small number. What we're interested in is to make sure these numbers stay negative, that we never cross the and become positive, which we don't. So this is getting very, very close to 0. So here we have a finite number. So this is the first time we're not going to positive or negative infinity, but we're approaching a finite number. This is a horizontal asymptote. All right, our last couple examples here, and we'll wrap this up. So let's look at a more complicated exponential function. So that's e so second len to get the e exponent, 1 minus x. Let's close that parentheses, minus 5. And let's zoom 6 it. 
So this is an exponential decay. So on the left side, we are going to positive infinity. And on the right side, it looks like we're flattening out. And we can go to the table and see that we are flattening out at around negative, or not at negative 5. Now, the table makes it look like it's exactly negative 5. It's not exactly negative 5. It's getting closer and closer to negative 5. But in this table, it only shows three decimal places. So it's these numbers would be negative 4 point and a whole bunch of 9s, but they're rounding to 5. So again, we have a finite value on the right side, which means we have a horizontal asymptote. Now, our last example, to enter this in the graphing calculator, now you should know the shape of this graph from our last unit, but we have to use the change of base formula. So we can write this as the log of x plus 2, log base 10, divided by the log of 5. And we have to enter this into our graphing calculator. graph it. Now we need to understand is this heading down to negative infinity and does it keep going or is something else happening here? Now we do know that this heads down on a fairly sharp steep thing and has a vertical asymptote but we're not interested in that we're interested in what happens over here. So let's look at our table and we're looking at what happens as we start to head negative and notice we get error as soon as we get to negative 2. Now, If we get negative 2 here we're taking the log of 0 and if you remember from uh, logarithm functions the log of x just x here the domain was for x greater than 0. So in this case our domain is x plus 2 greater than 0 or x greater than negative 2. So in this case as x goes to negative infinity the graph is undefined. You can't take the log of big negative numbers. And if we go back to our graph on the right side now this looks like it's flattening out but if we look at the table it's not approaching a fixed number. It keeps getting bigger and bigger forever. And if you just keep scrolling, you'll never see it flattening out. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. So it is heading towards positive infinity, but very slowly. So we've covered now today our unit on uh, n behaviors. We're going to write them as two statements. What happens as x approaches negative infinity, the left side of the graph, and what happens as and what happens to the y values and as what happens as x approaches positive infinity, the right side of the graph, and we're looking at what the y does. And the easiest way to do these is going to be using your graphing utility. Have a great day. Are you ready? Are you ready?